Russell Westbrook is the most athletic point guard in NBA history. He's also one of the greatest point guards of all time. And when you're this talented and good, there are bound to be comparisons. When are we going to see the next LeBron? Next Kobe? Next Russell Westbrook? With the mixtape era exploding the high school basketball scene in the late 2000s, high schoolers and sometimes even middle schoolers would often go mega viral because of a two minute highlight reel of them posterizing and terrorizing their competition with crazy dunks that make them look like a man amongst boys. Welcome to B-Ball Threads. This is what happened to every high schooler crowned the next Russell Westbrook. At one point in time, Dennis Smith Jr. was one of the best high schoolers in the nation and crowned the next Russell Westbrook, Derrick Rose, and John Wall. Dennis was regarded the best point guard in the nation and gained millions of views for his crazy bounce, making his competition look like toddlers. It was obvious why he had so much bounce. At an Adidas event, Dennis tore his ACL but didn't feel any pain. It was later discovered that he had an extra ACL in his leg, which is truly on some alien shit. After being ruled out for the season, Dennis claimed he was more explosive than ever after just two weeks, saying his vertical had increased by 8 inches. He finished his high school career as a consensus top 10 recruit, and despite offers from every blue blood school in the nation, Dennis decided to play for NC State instead. Picking up where he left off in high school, Dennis dominated the college scene, being the only player in ACC history to put up two triple doubles against league opponents. He also scored a career high 32 points to lead NC State to a win over Duke in their first win in Cameron Stadium since 1995. At the end of the season, Dennis averaged 18 points, 6 assists along with 2 steals a game and won the ACC Rookie of the Year. Dennis had a lot of hype coming into the 2017 NBA Draft thanks to his freaky athleticism and good play while at NC State. Around the time of the draft, Dennis Smith started to be compared to athletic guards like Baron Davis and Russell Westbrook. Although his career started promising on the Mavericks, he was quickly outshined by Luka Doncic who was drafted one year after him. The two were buddies, but Dennis says that the Mavs tried to pit the two against each other. His second season in the league was the last time he averaged 10 points per game in the NBA, now mostly serving as a backup or a third string point guard. Rather than a high flyer, Dennis is now known for his good and aggressive perimeter defense, averaging 7 points and a steal for Brooklyn off the bench last season. Many know Cole Anthony as a solid point guard for the Orlando Magic. Not a star by any means, but definitely a valuable player on the team. But back in high school, he was an explosive point guard regarded as one of the best players in the country. With his crazy mixtapes came hyping comparisons, many linked to none other than Russell Westbrook. Cole Anthony played at one of the most prestigious high schools in the nation, that being Oak Hill. When you watch Cole Anthony's overtime mixtape, it becomes clear why he was ranked the second best player in his class and why people thought he seriously could be the next Russell Westbrook. After three years at Malloy High School in New York, Cole transferred to Oak Hill for a senior season. There, Cole averaged a triple double of eight. There, Cole averaged a triple double of 18.5 points, 10 rebounds, and 10 assists, already doing Russell Westbrook things. He led his team to a 31-5 record and became the first player to average a triple-double at Oak Hill. After being named Virginia Gatorade Player of the Year and a McDonald's All-American, Cole shifted his focus to college and committed to the UNC Tar Heels. In his lone season at UNC, although Cole personally played well, the team sucked, ending up with a record of 14-19. As a freshman, Cole averaged 19 points, 6 rebounds, and 4 assists in 22 games. Cole was picked 15th in the 2020 NBA Draft by the Orlando Magic and it became clear pretty quickly he would most likely never reach anything near the next Russell Westbrook. It's been 4 years since Cole got drafted and while he's a productive player for his team, he'll most likely never get to all-star status. Last season, Cole averaged 12-4-3 and in 81 games off the bench for the Magic. Jalen Hands may perhaps be one of the first players to ever earn a comparison to Russell Westbrook. While being one of the best high schoolers in his class, Hans never had a successful college or NBA career which is why many forget that he was hyped up to be the next athletic point guard in the NBA. Jalen was a 5 star recruit at the end of his high school career and committed to UCLA in late 2015. His first year at UCLA was a mess, he played 2 out of control and as a result was benched for the season. Hans played much better the next season, averaging 14 points and 6 assists on his way to being named second team all Pac 12. Despite a good sophomore season, apparently it wasn't enough to bring some of the hype back because he was drafted 56 in the 2019 NBA Draft and then immediately traded away. After spending one season in the G League, Jalen has since been bouncing around professional leagues overseas including stops in Serbia, Greece, and Italy. 
Every YouTube video about Jalen LeCue had two things in common. One, they would go viral, and two, they all said he played like a baby Russell Westbrook. Perhaps the player most often compared to Russ, as every YouTube video title calls him Baby Westbrook, Jalen LeCue was an electrifying guard who could jump out of the building. Perhaps the game that put him on the map was his junior season opener against the then high school Zion Williamson. Not only did these videos gain millions of views as Zion was one of the biggest names in America at this point in time, but Jalen's team won and he was the main reason why. For the rest of the season, LeQ averaged a near triple double with 20 points, 9 rebounds, and 9 assists. He was all over YouTube, whether it was his crazy highlights or BTS vlogs with big channels like Slam and Overtime. After a senior season at Brewster Academy, Jalen finished high school as a 4 star recruit and the 42nd best recruit in the class of 2019. Because of a weird situation about his age, he was allowed and later decided to declare for the NBA draft straight out of high school, which may or may not have been a crucial mistake because he ended up going undrafted. Luckily for Jalen, the Suns gave him a chance and signed him to a four-year deal with two of those years being guaranteed. Since then, Jalen has moved between G League teams and has played for the Rio Grande Vipers for the last two seasons. And although he still has crazy highlights in the G League, it's safe to say his days of getting hyped up to be a baby Westbrook are over. Probably the only player to ever live up to the Westbrook comparisons is John ja Morant. But unlike all the players I previously talked about, his Westbrook comparisons only began when he started popping off at Murray State. Unlike these other players, Ja was an unknown and overlooked prospect coming out of high school. It was only because of hard work, strong will, and a huge amount of luck that Ja was discovered by Murray State in the first place. See, Ja was hooping at a local basketball tournament hoping to catch the eye of some college scouts, but he was unfortunately demoted to the secondary courts where the scouts were not watching. Luckily for Ja, a Murray State coach was craving for some chips and while purchasing a bag from a vending machine, he overheard balls bouncing in the secondary court and decided to check it out. The rest is history. Ja would get the opportunity at Murray State and never look back. In Ja's second season at Murray State, he would make his name known to the basketball world. I still vividly remember the moment I first saw Ja straight up jump over a dude in the middle of a game. He not only put up 25 a game, but also led Murray State to the second round of the NCAA tournament. You guys know the rest. Ja would go on to be the second pick in the NBA draft and instantly become a fan favorite and superstar for the Memphis Grizzlies. Hopefully, Ja can stay out of trouble and stop pretending to be a gangster because he was one of the most exciting and most loved stars in the league and has a bright future ahead of him. The last player and most recent to be granted a Westbrook comparison is Scoot Henderson. Now there definitely weren't as many videos I found calling him the next Westbrook compared to guys like Jalen LeCue, but they're definitely out there. Notably, a video by Slam saying Scoot could be a Russell Westbrook Damian Lillard hybrid. Now that's some serious hype. When you watch Scoot's highlights, the comparisons start to make sense. Not only does Scoot have crazy balance for a point guard, but he's also built like Westbrook as well. A strong point guard with crazy balance and a streaky jump shot is literally a description of Russell Westbrook. Scoot was a 5-star athlete out of high school, but instead of going to college or even completing his senior season, Scoot decided to play for the G League Ignite, becoming the youngest American professional athlete of all time. Instead of doing algebra homework, Scoot was hooping against grown men and former NBA players for two seasons, getting crucial experience that could help him at the next level. After an exhibition game against Victor Wembanyama, where Scoot dropped 28-5-9, the whole basketball world knew who he was. Scoot played the rest of the season under a spotlight and was expected to go top 3 in the upcoming draft. While some Westbrook comparisons began in high school, a majority of the comparisons I found started in his last season at Ignite. Scoot was drafted 3rd overall by the Trailblazers, a team that just lost their star point guard in Damian Lillard. Scoot was immediately put under pressure to be Portland's replacement franchise player. Unfortunately for him, the season started rough as he struggled to put the ball in the hoop and turn the ball over almost as many times as he assisted a teammate. He would finish the season averaging 14, 3, and 5, which looks good on paper, but Scoot shot a terrible 38% from the field and had over 3 turnovers a game. Many believe Scoot is not the answer as he didn't have a great season people thought he would have, but I really think they're just overreacting. He's a 20 year old kid trying to run the offense of an injured and young Blazers roster. He showed flashes and as long as he works on a shot and limits turnovers, he'll be a great player. As you can see, being compared to an all time great isn't a guarantee that the actual player will pan out. Some of these players barely got an opportunity to touch the league while others became role players or worked their way up to a respectful role. 
Many times, the hype a player receives doesn't justify how good they'll actually turn out to be. That's why so many big name high school recruits don't pan out in the NBA or college. There's a new challenge waiting for them at every stage in the sport and one wrong decision or one bad season in their path can ruin their whole career. Just because you're the best high school player in the nation doesn't mean you're guaranteed a Hall of Fame NBA career. If you want to know more about every number one high school recruit in the last 20 years, watch the video in the top left corner. If you want to know what happened to every recruit ranked above LaMelo Ball, watch the video in the top right corner. And lastly, if you enjoyed the video, please consider hitting the subscribe button and leaving a like. We're on the way to a thousand subscribers and we'd love for you to be a part of the journey. Peace.